Hello, my dear friends. Today I'll be discussing MCQs from the previous examinations. We are also going to discuss in details the answers giving full information about the same. This video is going to be extremely essential for the genuine aspirants of UGC net examination. So without wasting time, let us begin. Before we start the video, let me impart an important news to you all. And that is, now you all can learn with us in WhatsApp group as well. If you wish, then you can just drop a message in this number. Number is being displayed on the screen. You can make a call in this number or drop a message. We will guide you further. So let's begin today's video. Let's move towards the first question. Which one is the famous prose work of Samuel Taylor Coleridge? Your options are Kubla Khan, Christabel, Option B, Option C, Tradition and Individual Talent, Option D, Biographia Literaria. And your answer is Option D. Why? Let us discuss. Biographia Literaria is written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Work's full name is Biographical Sketches of My Literary Life and Opinions. An autobiography. It is an autobiography of Samuel Taylor Coleridge, which was published in the year 1817. Please remember this in mind, which has two volumes and it has 23 chapters. Question number two, Chinua Abbe's novel, Things Fall Apart, takes its title from a poem by, your options are, William Butler Yeats, George Bernard Shaw, Bernard Copps, and Jack Muggs. Your answer is, William Butler Yeats, or W.B. Yeats, as he is known with his short name. Let us discuss about the answer. This title, Things Fall Apart, is taken from a poem called The Second Coming by W. B. Yeats. Chinua Abe is most famous for his novel Things Fall Apart, published in 18, sorry, 1958. Next question. Alexander Pope was born in your option A is London on 21st May 1677 option B London on 22nd May 1688 option C London on 21st May 1688 or option D London on 24th May 1688 Let's see the answer. Alexander Pope was born in London on 21st May 1688. So the correct answer is option C. The year of the glorious revolution. He is regarded as one of the greatest English poets and the foremost poets of 18th century. Let's move to the next question. How many of Shakespeare's play are classified as histories. Option A 7, option B 10, option C 15, option D 16. And your answer is option B that is 10. 37 Shakespeare's plays, these are divided into three types. They are tragedies, comedies and histories. Of all the plays, that Shakespeare wrote during the reign of James I. Question number five. Full Phantom Five Thy Father Lies is an example of which literary device? Number A, assonance. Number two, enjambment. Number C, alliteration. And number D, apostrophe. Here the answer is C, alliteration. 
Alliteration is a term to describe a literary device in which a series of words begin with the same constant sound. And here we find F of full, F of phantom and F of five and F of father as well. Therefore, it is alliteration. Let's move ahead. Question number six. Utopia was first printed in 1516, 1615, 1517 and 1518. Your answer is A, that is 1516. In order to remember what you can do, you can just keep in mind 15, lesser number comes first and then 16. Okay, 1516 is the printing year of Utopia. Utopia is a work of fiction and socio-political satire by Thomas More, written in Latin, published in 1516 and here we find frame narrative. Next question, which famous work of John Milton's was based on the fall of man? Paradise regained. Paradise Lost, Samson Agonists, and Lord of Flies. Here, the answer is B. Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is an epic poem in blank verse by the 17th century English poet John Milton. The first version was published in 1667 of Paradise Lost which consists of 10 books with over 10,000 lines of verse. A second edition followed in 1674, arranged into 12 books. The poem concerns the biblical story of the fall of man, the temptation of Adam and Eve by the fallen angel Satan and their expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Let's move ahead. Question number eight. The play Macbeth is the play Macbeth set in what country? England, Ireland, Scotland, and Ireland. The answer is Scotland. Here, let's understand few more details about Macbeth. Macbeth is a tragedy by William Shakespeare. It is first performed in 1606. Macbeth is set during the 16th century in Scotland in the northernmost region of what is now the United Kingdom. It was first published in the folio of 1623. It is Shakespeare's shortest play. It dramatizes the damaging physical and psychological effect of political ambition on those who seek power for its own sake. Question number 9. Adonius is Shelley's elegiac tribute to the dead. Wordsworth, Keats, Blake or Burns? Your answer is B. Your answer is B. Let's find out why. Adonius, an elegy on the death of John Keats, author of Endymion, Hyperion, etc. Adonius is a pastoral elegy written by Percy by C. Shelley or P. B. Shelley for John Keats in 1821. 1821. It has 495 lines in 55. Spencerian stanzas composed in the spring of 1821 immediately after 8, 11th April when Shelley heard of Kitt's death. It was published by Charles Ollier in July 1821. Let's move to the next question. Seven types of ambiguity is a critical work by William Empson, 
Achilles, C. M. Bowram, M. H. Abrahams. Your answer is William Empson. Let's find out few details about this answer. Seven types of ambiguity is a work of literary criticism by William Empson, first published in 1930, and it was. 20th century work. Second revised was published by Chateau and Windus in London, 1947. Question number 11. How many writers are the members of University Wits? 8, 9, 6, 7. Your answer is D, 7. Why? Let us find out. University wit is a phrase used to name a group of late 16th century English playwright and pamphleters who were educated at the universities Oxford and Cambridge and who became popular writers. The term university wits was coined by George Sansbury, George Sansbury. Please remember his name, a 19th century journalist and author. Christopher Marlowe, Robert Green and Thomas Nash graduated from Cambridge University. Thomas Lodge and George Paley graduated from Oxford University. Seven university wits are John Lilly, George Paley, Robert Green, Thomas Kidd, Thomas Lodge, Christopher Marlowe and Thomas Nash. Thomas Kidd is not believed to study in any of the university but his style matched with the authors of the university wits. Please remember this point. It is very important. You have to remember Thomas Kidd's name more importantly compared to any other writers. Question number 12. The heroic couplet consists of three rhymic pentameters, four rhyming pentameters, two rhyming pentameters, five rhyming pentameters. Your answer is option C. Two rhyming pentameters. Here, let's see the answer. A pair of rhymic iambic pentameters, 10 syllable line rhymic in couplets, first used heroic couplets in the legends of good women written by Chaucer. Question number 13. John Dryden's All for Love is based on Antony Leopatra. Romeo Juliet, Love's Labour's Lost, The Comedy of Errors. Your answer is number A, option A, Antony, Leopatra. And here we find, All for Love or the World Well Lost, published in 1677, Heroic Drama. It is written in Heroic Drama Structure. Written by John Dryden. It's a tragedy. Written in blank verse. It is based on Shakespeare's Antony and Leopatra and focuses on the last hours of lives of its hero and heroine. Question number 14. Caliban is a character in The Tempest. The Spanish Tragedy, The Comedy of Humours and Brave New World. Your option is, your answer option is A. Here, Caliban, son of the witch, Sycorax. It is an important character in William Shakespeare's play, The Tempest. 
Caliban is half human, half monster. After his island becomes occupied by Prospero and his daughter Miranda, Caliban is forced into slavery. Question number 15. Jonathan Swift's A Tale of a Tub was published in 1714, 1703, 1704, 1724. Your option is 1704. A Tale of Tub, Prose Satire by Jonathan Swift was written between 1696 to 1699. Published originally in 1704 by John Nutt, expanded into 1710, written for the universal improvement of mankind. Next question. Who called Chaucer the well of undefiled? Here, option A, Edmund Spencer, option B, T.S. Eliot. John Milton and option D John Dryden it is option A Edmund Spencer why let us find out Edmund Spencer was an English poet best known for the fairy queen an epic poem and fantastical allegory celebrating Tudor dynasty and Elizabeth I Edmund Spencer was born in East Smithfield, London, around the year 1552, who died on 13th January 1599, London, England. Edmund Spencer, in his fairy queen called Chaucer, well of English undefiled. Question number 17. The epic Aeneid was written by Virgil, Homer, Sophocles, and Shaw. Your answer is option A. Virgil. Let's see the highlighters to check why this is the answer. The Aeneid is a Latin epic poem written by Virgil between 29 and 19th BC 9896 lines it has which is written in dactylic hexameter published in English 1697 the Aeneid can be divided into halves based on the disparate subject matter of books 1 to 6 and book 7 to 12 Book 1 to 6 tells us Aeneid's journey to Latium in Italy. Book 7 to 12 tells us, tells us the war in Latium. Question number 18. Let's see which question is posed in question number 18. In which novel do we get the character of Bulstrode? Your options are... Option A, Little Dorrit, The Americans, David Copperfield, and Option D, Middlemarch. Here, your answer is D, Middlemarch. Middlemarch, a study of provincial life, is novel by the English author Mary Ann Evans under the pen name George Eliot. First appeared in eight volumes in 1871 to 72, set in a fictitious English Midland town from 1829 to 1832. Nicholas Bulstrode is a wealthy middle March banker. He is married to Walter Vincy's sister. Question number 19. Name the first novel of Doris. Lossy. First option is Lord of Flies. Second option is Brave the New World. Option C, The Grass is Singing. And option D, The Golden Notebook. 
Your answer is option C. The grass is singing. Why? Let us find out. The grass is singing is the best novel published in 1950 by British Nobel Prize winning author Doris Lessing. It takes place in southern Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe in South Africa during 1940s and deals with the racial politics between whites and blacks in that country. The title is a phrase from the 15 lines of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. Question number 20. How many songs does Gitanjali contain? 100, 103, 105 and 102. Your right option is 100. Gitanjali is written by Rabindranath Tagore. It is a collection of poems. Tagore received Nobel Prize for Literature because of this work which was published in the year 1913, Gitanjali or Song Offering. It is a part of representative works. Its central theme is devotion and its motto is, I am here to sing these songs. Published in Bengali 1910 and published in English in 1912. The original Bengali collection has 156 by 157 poems was published on August 14, 1910. The English Gitanjali or Song Offerings is a collection of 103 English prose poems which are Tagore's own English translation of Bengali poems first published in November 1912 by the Indian Society of London. Let's move ahead. Question number 21. For God's sake, hold your tongue and let me love. This occurs in which of the work? Option A. Canonization. Love's alchemy. The ecstasy. And option D. A valediction for bidding morning. Option A is the answer, canonization. And why? Let us find out. Let's see the highlighters. The canonization is a poem by English metaphysical poet John Donne. It was first published in 1633. The poem is viewed as exemplifying Donne's wit and irony. It is a five stanza poem that is separated into sets of nine lines. The lines rhyme is in pattern of A, B, B, A, C, 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 A, A. It is in iambic pentameter which has 45 lines altogether. Let's move to the next question. Which poem begins with these lines? The curfew tolls the nail of parting day. The lowing herd when slowly over the lay, the ploughman homeward plots the weary way. Your options are Pied Beauty, Lycidas, Adonias or Elegy written in a country churchyard. Option D, Elegy written in a country churchyard. Let's analyze the answer. It is an elegy written in Country Courtyard is a poem by Thomas Gray which was completed in 1750 and first published in 1751. The poem's origin was unknown but it was partly inspired by Gray's thoughts following the death of the poet Richard West in 1742. Originally titled Stanjas wrote in a country churchyard. Please remember this. The original title of the poetry. 
it has 128 lines which is written in heroic quatrains a quatrain is a four line stanza and heroic quatrains rhyme in an ab ab pattern and are written in iambic pentameter next question what is the title of the second section of the westland death by water the fire sermon a game of chess or what the thunder said your option c is the correct answer let us look into the analysis section answer c the wasteland is a poetry by t s eliot which is written in 20th century and central work of modernist poetry which was published in 1922 and it holds 434 lines the poem first appeared in the united kingdom in the october issue of eliot's the criterion and the united states in the november issues of the dial it was published in book form in december 1922 the poem is divided into five sections the first section is the burial of the dead second section is a game of chess third section is the fire sermon and fourth section is death by water the fifth section is what the thunder said Who is the first American African American to be named poet laureate in USA? Alice Walker, Rita Dove, Lucille Clifton, and Chinua Abe. Your answer is option B, Rita Dove. Rita Dove is the first African and American poet laureate consultant in poetry. She was born in Arkan Ohio her third poetry collection Thomas and Beulah won the 1987 Pulitzer Prize she was born on 28th August 1952 and right now she is 68 years old Rita Francis Dove is an American poet and essayist question Name the author of Gravity's Rainbow. John Updike, option A. Vladimir Navakov, option B. Thomas Pinchon, option C. And option D. Philip Roth. Answer is Thomas Pinchon. And uh, Thomas Pinchon, Thomas Ruggles Pinchon, is, was born on May 8th, 19. 37 Gravity's Rainbow is a 1973 novel by American writer Thomas Pichon The narrative is set primarily in Europe at the end of World War II and centers on the design, production and dispatch of V2 rockets by the German military Hello my dear friends I welcome you all to our channel Best Notes Tutorials and today I am going to continue with MCQ's discussion where we are going to choose the correct option and we will analyze the answer. And before we move into our today's session let me tell you now you all can join our WhatsApp group as well and that is going to be extremely essential and helpful for genuine aspirants of UGC net and KV let us begin question number one what is the subtitle of the prelude your options are growth of a poet's mind a preface of my life option C an autobiography and option D a poet's story your answer is a growth of a poet's mind Option A is correct answer and let's see the highlighters. The Prelude is a poem by Wordsworth. 
Wordsworth began the prelude in 1798 at the age of 28 and continued to work on it throughout his life. It was published in 1850. The prelude is a long poem and compiled into 14 books. The subtitle of the book poem the growth of the poet's mind it is an autobiographical epic poem in blank verse though his though this title was given to the poem by wordsworth's executors after his death the prelude is a poem set in the lake district of northern side of england which technically makes its setting a part of london Question number two. Which of the following is not a lake poet? Wordsworth, Coleridge, Saudi, or Shelley? And your answer is Shelley. Why? Let us find out. The lake poets were a group of English poets who all lived in the Lake District of England, United Kingdom, in the first half of the 19th century. The three main figures of what has become known as the Lakes School were Wordsworth, William Wordsworth, Samuel Taylor Coleridge and Robert Southey. They were associated with several other poets and writers including Dorothy Wordsworth, Charles Lamb, Mary Lamb, Charles Lloyd, Hartley Coleridge, John Wilson and Thomas De Quincey. Question number three. Chinua Abe was a Canadian novelist, Australian novelist, Indian novelist, or a Nigerian novelist? And option D, Nigerian novelist, is your answer. Chinua Abe is full Albert Chinua Lumogu Akabe, born November 16, 1930, ODG. Nigeria, died on March 21st, 2013 in Boston, Massachusetts. Notable works, Things Fall Apart, No Longer at Ease, A Man of the People, Arrow of God. Things Fall Apart, his first novel, the title is taken from W.B. Yeats' ominous poem, The Second Coming. It has received Man Booker International Prize in the year 2007. Which novel by William Faulkner deals with the story history of Sutpan's 100? Options are As I Lay Dying, Light in August, Absalom, Absalom, The Second and the Fury. And your answer is option C. Absalom, Absalom. Absalom, Absalom is a novel by the American author William Faulkner, first published in 1936, taking place before, during and after the American Civil War. It is a story about three families of the American South with a focus on the life of Thomas Sutpen. Question number five, which among the following works by John Bunyan is not an allegory? Options are The Life and Death of Mr. Badman, Pilgrim's Progress, Grace Abounding or John Crown? Option C is the answer. Grace Abounding, Spiritual Autobiography of John Bunyan written during the first years of his 12-year imprisonment for non-conformist religious activities, published in 1666. Full title of this work is Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners or a, belief, or a Brief Relation of the Exceeding Mercy of God in Christ to His Poor Servants John Bunyan. Lamia is a poem by 
Shelley, Keats, Rossetti or Spencer? Option B is the correct answer. Lamia is a narrative poem written by English poet John Keats which first appeared in the volume Lamia, Isabella. The Eve of St. Agnes and other poems published in July 1820. The poem was written in 1819 during the famously productive period that produced his 1819 odes. The poem tells how the god Herms hears of a nymph who is more beautiful than all. It is written in rhymic couplet. Let's move towards the next question. Question number seven. Which of the following novels of Dickens is based on his own life? Your options are option A, Nicholas Nickel by Hard Times, David Copperfield or Great Expectations. And the correct answer is option C, David Copperfield. David Copperfield is the eighth novel of Charles Dickens. The novel's full title is The Personal History, Adventures, Experience and Observation of David Copperfield, the younger of Blunden's son, Blunden Stone, Rookery. It was first published as a, seri as a serial in 1849-50 and as a book in 1850. It is an autobiographical novel. Question number eight. How long did Robinson Crusoe live on the deserted island? Option A, 12 years and 9 days. Option B, 16 years. Option C, 28 years, 2 months and 19 days. Option D, 21 years and 2 months. Option C is your answer. 28 years, 2 months and 19 days. Robinson Crusoe is a novel written by Daniel Dafoe, first published in London in 25th April 1719. Dafoe's first long work of fiction, it introduced two of the most enduring characters in Indian literature, that is Robinson Crusoe and Friday. He was a person, he was a real person and the book, a travelogue of true incidents. Robinson Crusoe lived on the deserted island for 28 years, 2 months and 19 days. The phrase sweetness and light was first used by Keats, Matthew Arnold, Swift, Dr. Johnson and correct answer is Jonathan Swift. Sweetness and light is an English idiom that can be used in common speech either as a statement of personal happy consciousness or as literal report on another person. Depending upon sense of humor, some may use the phrase with mild irony. Jonathan Swift first used the phrase in his mock heroic prose satire, The Battle of the Books, which was published in 1704. A defense of classical learning which he published as a prolego menon to his a uh, tale of a tub question number 10 a caesura is a pause in a uh, pause in a stanza pause in a stanza pause at the end of a line of a verse pause in a line of verse Pause in the beginning of middle of a line of verse. And the answer option D. As answer is option D. One such pause is known as Sasura. It is a rhythmical pause in a poetic line or a sentence. It often occurs in the middle of a line or sometimes at the beginning. There are two types of caesura. They are feminine caesura and masculine caesura. Feminine caesura has two divisions, epic caesura and lyric caesura. Friends, please keep in mind, in the examination, you might be asked about these
divisions. Question number 11. The sonnet was introduced in England by Surrey, Rat, Sydney or Shakespeare. Your answer is Rat. The sonnet was introduced in England by Sir Thomas Yatt and Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, in the year 16th century. Sonnet fixed verse form the Italian origin consisting of 14 lines that are typical five-foot iambic rhymic according to a prescribed scheme. Question number 12. Which one is a sequel to Look Back in Anger? Option A. Deja Vu, The Entertainer, Under Plain Cover, A Better Class of Person. And option A. Deja Vu is the correct answer. Deja Vu is a stage play by John Osborne, which was published in 1992. It was Osborne's final work for the theatre, the failure of which on the stage made him decide to give up play writing. The play is a sequel to Osborne's first successful play, Look Back in Anger, that was published in the year 1956. It portrays the life and thoughts of the central character from the earlier play, Jimmy Porter in Middle Age. Question number 13. Who wrote the Epithalmion? Your options are Option A. John Lilly Option B. Sir Philip Sidney Option C. Edmund Spencer Option D. Samuel Daniel And Option C. Edmund Spencer is the answer. Edmund Spencer's Epithalmion is an ode written to his bride Eliza Boyle on their wedding day in 1594. The first published in 1595 in London by William Ponson by as per a volume entitled Emirati and Epithalmion. Rhyme scheme. In this form, we find ABABCC and DADEFF. Except the 15th stanza. 24 stanzas are there which each with either 18 lines or 19 lines. Only 15th stanza has 17 lines. The last stanza is envy with 7 lines. There are 433 lines in total. There are 365 longer lines and 68 shorter lines. The 365 longer lines represent the year leading up to Spencer's wedding day, the poem Midnight of the Day of the Wedding. The 24 stanzas represent the 24 hours in a day and the 365 longer lines represent every day in a year. Spencer's wedding is one day the first 16 stanzas are the daytime and the last eight are the night time and the relationship with Boyle has been occurring for a year. 365 as a metaphor for a year and stanza 15 is having this rhymic scheme F E D G H H. Question number 14. The mistakes of our night is the subtitle of option A, Brave New World, The Spanish Tragedy, The Comedy of Humors, or She Stoops to Conquer. And your answer is option D, She Stoops to Conquer. It is a comedy by Oliver Goldsmith, first performed in London in 1773. Initially, the play was titled Mistakes of a Night. The events within the play take place in one night. Which novel, next question, which novel is not written by Jane Austen? Options are option A, Emma. 
option b the chimes persuasions option c and none of the above your answer is the chimes option b the chimes a goblin a goblin story of some bells that rang an old year out and a new year in commonly referred to as christmas as the chimes it is novella written by charles dickens first published in 1844 one year after a christmas carol the books divided the book is divided into four parts what was the duration of the 100 years war option a 13 100 to 1350 1302 to 1453 1337 to 1453 or 131 to 141 and the correct answer is 1337 to 1453 a series of conflicts between the west europe from 1337 to 1453 waged between the house of plantagenet and its cadets its cadet house of lancaster ruler of the kingdom of england and the house of valois over the right to rule the kingdom of france it is middle aged work victory of french house of valois and its allies Question number seventeen. The poem "Solitary Reaper" contains twenty-eight lines. Option A, thirty lines. Option B, thirty-two lines. Option C, and thirty-four lines. Option D. And correct answer is thirty-two lines. Option C. Option C, that is thirty-two lines, is the correct answer. It is written by William Wordsworth. The "Solitary Reaper" was written on November fifth, eighteen hundred and five. published in 1807 the poem is broken into four eight uh, four eight line stanzas 32 lines iambic tetrameter rhyme a b c b d d e e or a b a b c d c c d d in the first and last stanzas the first and third lines don't rhyme while in the other two stanzas they do Next question, question number eighteen. The protagonist of the famous work Gulliver's Travel is option A, Lilliput; option B, Lemuel Gulliver; option C, Jack Gulliver; option D, John Gulliver. And the correct answer is Lemuel Gulliver. Here we find Lemuel Gulliver, who was, who had landed into the Lilliputians' kingdom. where he was huge and lilliputians were of tiny size this book was published in 28th october 1726 it is prose satire political prose satire on jonathan by jonathan swift protagonist of this work lemuel gulliver is lemuel gulliver Op- question number 19 John Dryden's Absalom and Achitophel is a religious tract political allegory option C comic verse epic or option D comedy and option B political allegory is the correct answer let's see the highlighters Absalom and Achitophel is a celebrated satire poem by John Dryden It is written in heroic couplets. It was pu- first published in 1681. The poem tells the biblical tale of the rebellion of Absalom against King David. It is an allegory, the finest political satire in English language. It is written in iambic pentameter. There is an A A B B rhymic scheme. Question number twenty: Who wrote the poem "Our Casuarina Tree"? And the answer in the options are: Option A, Toru Dutt; Option B, Sarojini Naidu; 
ऑप्शन सी अरुण कोलाकर ऑप्शन डी यूनिस डिसूजा एंड द ऑप्शन ए तोरु दत्त इज द करेक्ट आंसर आवर कैजरीना ट्री इज अ पोम बाय तोरु दत्त एन इंडियन पोएट पब्लिश्ड इन 1881 इट इज एन ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल पोम व्हिच हैज 55 लाइंस व्हिच इज डिवाइडेड इनटू फाइव स्टैंडर्स where we find 18 lines of each stanza consist of an octave or eight lines following the style of a sonnet it has two quatrains four lines with closed rhymes and a rhymic target three lines question number 21 how many pilgrim Pilgrims figure in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. Option A, twenty-six. Option B, twenty-seven. Option C, twenty-eight. Option D, twenty-nine. And option D, twenty-nine is the correct answer. In the Canterbury Tales, thirty-two characters make the trip to Martyr Saint Thomas Becket's in Canterbury. Here we find twenty-nine characters are mentioned in line twenty-four of the general prologue. The narrator joins this group, making thirty characters. The host, Harry Bailey, makes thirty-one characters. The canons, Yeoman, who joins the group later, makes thirty-two. Canterbury Tales, written by Chaucer, it is written in heroic couplet. Question number twenty-two: Identify the tragedy written by Ben Jonson. Option A. Volpon on the Fox, the Alchemist, Sejanus, or Bartholomew Fair. Option C, Sejanus is the correct answer. Sejanus, his fall. It is a play by Ben Jonson. It is a tragedy about Lu Lucius Elius Sejanus, the favorite of the Roman Emperor Tiberius. Sejanus his fall was performed at court in 1603 and the globe theater in 1604 Next question Question number 23 which is Kamala Markandeya's first novel Option A Handful of Rice Option B Some Inner Fury Option C A Silence of Desire Option D Nectar in a Sea and the correct answer is Nectar in a Sea Let's see the highlighters of this answer. Nectar in a Sieve is a 1950 novel by Kamala Markandeya. The book is set in India during a period of intense urban development and is the chronicle of the marriage between Rukmini, youngest daughter of a village headman, and Nathan, a tenant farmer. The title of the novel is taken from the 1825 poem Work without hope, by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. It was translated into seventeen languages. It is first-person narrative, and the narrator is Rukmini. Question number twenty-four: Who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in two thousand seventeen? Option A: Pamuk. Option B: Ishiguro. Option C: Alexievich. Option D, Dylan. Your answer is option B, Ishiguro. Sir Kazuo Ishiguro was born on eighth November nineteen fifty four. He is an English novelist, screenwriter, and short story writer. In seventeen in two thousand seventeen, he received the Swedish Academy Award. Ishiguro has received novel. Prize in literature. Last question: Little Nell is a character in Dickens, David Copperfield, The Old Curiosity Shop, Bleak House, or The Great Expectations. And the answer is The Old Curiosity Shop, which was published in the year eighteen hundred and forty. Friends, by this we have completed two. days mcqs i hope both are going to help you all in answering mcqs in the examination and 
if you desire you can join our whatsapp group also which is going to be extremely essential and helpful for you all we will be waiting for your email and your whatsapp message so till then i wish you all all the best prepare well and tell us your queries thank you so much